After he died 25 years, Roy Rogers' daughter confirms what we thought all along. Did you know about the legendary cowboy Roy Rogers? His fame soared in the 1940s, captivating particularly the hearts of young girls who viewed him as an emblem of heroism. However, whispers of a mysterious past have lingered, a secret veiled until this moment, now affirmed by his daughter, validating our long-standing suspicions. Roy Rogers wasn't just celebrated for his contributions to music and film. He was also revered as a dedicated family man fathering 12 children. Despite the challenges this undoubtedly brought, many aspects of his life and career have remained hidden from public view. With his daughter's recent revelations, we are invited to explore the genuine story behind the legend. Join us as we uncover the truth, long suspected and now finally brought to light. Leonard Franklin Sly, who would later be known worldwide as Roy Rogers, was born in Cincinnati, Ohio on November 5, 1911. In 1930, he made the pivotal move to California, setting the stage for his future musical career. He quickly became involved in the music scene, joining several bands and notably helping to establish the Sons of the Pioneers alongside Bob Nolan. His career took a decisive turn in 1938 when he adopted the name Roy Rogers. This change coincided with his entry into Hollywood Westerns, a transition cemented by signing a contract with Republic Pictures, thus beginning the legendary journey of the man who would become known as the King of the Cowboys. Intriguing insights from Roy Rogers' niece, Julie, shed light on the Hollywood executive's attempts to mold Rogers into a cinematic icon akin to Clark Gable, particularly targeting his eyes to mirror Gable's distinctive look. Julie humorously noted the futility of their efforts, stating, It was Clark Gable's eyes that they were shooting for when it came to Grandpa, but he was never going to have Clark Gable's eyes. Recognising the impossibility of replicating such a specific trait, the studio shifted its focus towards altering other aspects of Roger's image to fit their vision. The pursuit of an idealised image didn't stop with his appearance, it extended to his physique. Julie recounted how the studio deemed Rogers not muscular enough, suggesting he perform a hundred handstands a day and walk on his hands to build strength. Rogers embraced this challenge, often moving from set to set on his hands. Despite these efforts to meet Hollywood's physical standards, the audience remained unswayed by these superficial changes, which ultimately had little effect on his appeal. Rogers' aversion to the superficiality of Hollywood socialising posed another dilemma. When asked to network at social events, Rogers proposed an unconventional solution, bringing along a friend, not from the celebrity circle, but his hunting companion. They spent the event discussing hunting, a stark contrast to the expected mingling. This incident humorously highlighted how Rogers' grounded personality clashed with the artificiality of Hollywood's social scene, emphasising his authenticity and the unique charm that made him a beloved figure far removed from the studio's initial attempts to repackage his image. The tale of Roy Rogers' ascent to country western music fame and Hollywood stardom is a remarkable one, beginning with an exchange as humble as a bushel for a guitar. With a deep-seated love for music, he went on to co-found the Sons of the Pioneers. This group quickly made a name for themselves with their hit Tumbling Tumbleweeds, leading to cameo roles in several films. A pivotal moment in Roger's career came upon discovering that Republic Pictures was on the hunt for a new singing cowboy due to Gene Autry's financial disagreements with the studio. Rogers, seeing his chance, went to audition but was initially rebuffed by a studio guard. Not one to give up easily, he ingeniously blended in with a group of Western extras to gain entry. It was then that a producer, recognising him from his work with the Sons of the Pioneers, tapped him on the shoulder. This was no guard, but a gateway to opportunity. Rogers was told to get his guitar and ultimately won the audition. This serendipitous event marked the turning point that would transform his career forever. Chasing fame, Rogers knew he needed a name that was both heroic and unforgettable. Operating under Len Sly for his music with the Sons of the Pioneers and as Dick Weston in small film roles, he chose to transform into Roy Rogers. This decision was thoughtful. The surname Rogers was in honor of Will Rogers, the humorist whom Roy admired deeply. The given name, Roy, was inspired by its roots in the American rendition of the French term for king, reflecting a sovereign and powerful aura fitting for an up-and-coming cowboy icon. 
1938, Roy Rogers' career took a dramatic turn upward as he stepped into the role previously held by Gene Autry in the film Under Western Stars. This movie became a pivotal moment for Rogers, captivating both critics and viewers with his engaging performance. Unbeknownst to him at the time, this role would kickstart an extraordinary period of success, positioning him as the premier Western star at the box office. His reign at the top would span an impressive 12 years, from 1943 to 1954, marking the beginning of his legendary status in Hollywood. Trigger Roy Rogers' Golden Palomino Stallion played an indispensable role in Rogers' on-screen identity. Their relationship extended far beyond a mere cinematic alliance. They were genuinely inseparable. Trigger emerged as a star in his own capacity, proudly featured alongside Rogers on movie posters as the smartest horse in the movies. The profound bond shared between the two and Trigger's remarkable intelligence were key factors that greatly enhanced the allure and success of Roy Rogers' films. At the zenith of his career, Roy Rogers reached an unprecedented level of fame and commercial success, rivaling even that of Walt Disney in terms of merchandise proliferation. His influence extended well beyond the confines of the cinema, establishing him as a cultural icon deeply embedded in popular culture. Reflecting on the impact he had on family life, Rogers, in a 1992 interview with The Inquirer, described himself as a de facto babysitter of the era, providing a safe and enjoyable environment for children while offering parents a brief respite. They would leave their children to enjoy his films and return to find them contented, full of treats like candy and popcorn. This recollection highlights the wholesome, family-oriented appeal of Rogers' work, affirming his status not only as a cherished entertainer, but also as a trusted figure for parents and an endearing icon to children. The personal life of Roy Rogers was a tapestry of both immense joy and profound sorrow, weaving a narrative rich in emotion and resilience. A loving father at heart, Rogers, alongside his first wife, Arlene, encountered obstacles in their desire to build a family. Their decision to adopt a baby girl named Cheryl in 1942 marked a hopeful beginning. Yet, this joy was soon overshadowed by tragedy when Arlene passed away shortly after the birth of their biological children, Linda in 1943 and Roy Rogers Jr., lovingly nicknamed Dusty in 1946. The loss of Arlene left Rogers a widower burdened with the care of three young children, propelling him into a deep personal crisis and testing his strength in the face of adversity. In the midst of hardship, Roy Rogers discovered comfort and companionship with Dale Evans, his cherished co-star. Their relationship, already deep, blossomed into romance unexpectedly, culminating in Rogers' dramatic proposal to Evans before a rodeo audience. Mounted on trigger, his faithful horse, Rogers asked Evans to marry him, and she silently agreed with a yes as she stood beside him under the spotlight. Their marriage on New Year's Eve in 1947 signified more than a union of two stars. It heralded a new beginning for Rogers, offering him a chance at love and a renewed life. Their journey together faced immediate tests, particularly with the arrival of their daughter, Robin, who faced societal challenges and medical issues from birth. Despite societal pressures and medical advice to the contrary, Rogers and Evans chose to care for Robin at home, a decision that underscored their unwavering love and commitment to her. Although Robin's life was tragically brief, succumbing to complications from MPS that led to sepsis just after her second birthday, her impact on her family was profound. She not only changed their lives, but also helped shift societal views on developmental disabilities. The openness and courage of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in sharing their personal struggles and triumphs made them pioneers in advocating for acceptance and understanding of individuals with Down syndrome and other disabilities. Their legacy is marked not just by their contributions to entertainment, but by their significant role in promoting a more inclusive and compassionate society. In a 1999 interview with John Kaiser of The Inquirer, Roy Rogers offered insights into his life, colored by both happiness and hardship, emphasizing, if you don't have tough times in your life, it's hard to appreciate the good times. Life is what you get out of it. You can help make misery or you can help make happiness. As his celebrated career advanced, Rogers faced daunting financial difficulties that threatened his standing and prosperity in Hollywood. A significant blow was dealt when he suffered losses from a diamond mine investment. 
Despite his efforts to adapt by branching out into various movie genres and television shows, he found it challenging to replicate the success he enjoyed in his heyday. Despite these setbacks, Roger's faith and dedication to his family never wavered. A man of deep Christian faith, he sought comfort and strength in God's grace, engaging in prayer and Bible study alongside his wife, Dale Evans, who also upheld the same spiritual beliefs. Their consistent church attendance and support for Christian initiatives showcased their profound commitment to their faith, offering them resilience and guidance through the ups and downs of life and career. In October 1952, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans graced Cincinnati with a visit that left an indelible mark on the city. They performed at the Cincinnati Gardens and made an appearance on Ruth Lyons' popular show, The 50 Club, broadcast on WLWT. During this visit, Rogers humorously shared his connection to the Chaka heritage, playfully noting that he was 164th Chaka. Beyond their scheduled performances and media engagements, Rogers and Evans demonstrated their deep-seated compassion through a heartfelt interaction with children from a Covington home for disabled youngsters. Among these children was a six-year-old boy who had faced neglect and abusive from his alcoholic parents and was subsequently abandoned. Dressed in his iconic cowboy attire, Rogers met the boy, offering him not just a glimpse of celebrity, but a moment filled with joy and the promise of hope, despite the boy's challenging life experiences. The story of Marion Fleming, who would later be known as Mimi Swift, beautifully illustrates the warmth and inclusivity of the Rogers family. Born in an air raid shelter in Edinburgh, Scotland, during the tumult of World War II, Marion's early life was spent in orphanages, setting the stage for an unlikely fairy tale. Her life took a remarkable turn when she had the opportunity to sing for Roy Rogers and Dale Evans during their visit to Dunfermline. This performance not only showcased her vocal talent, but also forged a deep connection with the couple, particularly with her soon-to-be sister Dodie, another adoptee of the Rogers family. Roy Rogers held Mimi in a special place within his heart, treating her with the same love and affection he had for his biological children. He often said, She's been with us since she was 13 years old. We love her just as much as we do our own children, highlighting the genuine bond they shared. Encouraged by Rogers, Mimi pursued her passion for music and frequently performed alongside Roy, Dale, and the rest of the family. Her enchanting voice became a fixture in their performances, further cementing her place within the Rogers legacy. Mimi's journey from an orphanage in Scotland to the heart of Hollywood royalty is a testament to the love and unity that defined the Rogers family. In 1955, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans once more opened their hearts and home to a new family member, adopting Lou I. Lee, a three-year-old orphan of the Korean War, whom they affectionately renamed Debbie Lee. Her arrival infused the Rogers household with renewed joy and the promise of fresh beginnings. However, a devastating event occurred on August 17, 1964, just after Debbie celebrated her 12th birthday. She was part of a church group on a mission to deliver food and clothing to an orphanage in Tijuana, Mexico, when the bus she was on collided with a truck. This tragic accident claimed Debbie's life, leaving an indelible mark of sorrow on the Rogers family. Roy Rogers deeply valued his time with family, immersing himself in activities like playing games, sharing stories, singing together, and enjoying horseback rides. These shared experiences were not just for bonding. They served as opportunities for Rogers to instill essential values like honesty, kindness, generosity, and courage in the younger generations. He once poignantly expressed, my family is my life, highlighting the profound importance of his loved ones in everything he did. In July 1988, Rogers made a memorable return to Cincinnati for the celebrated Greater Cincinnati Homecoming, a key part of the city's bicentennial festivities. Upon his arrival, when a reporter inquired if he was acquainted with the legendary cowboy, Rogers humorously confirmed his familiarity with himself. This event coincided with the Major League Baseball All-Star Game at Riverfront Stadium, attracting a constellation of 80 celebrities to the city. Amid this gathering of notable personalities, Roy Rogers stood out capturing the limelight and drawing the most attention, a testament to his enduring charm and appeal. On July 6, 1998, 
the world bid farewell to the legendary Roy Rogers, yet his remarkable legacy continues to touch the hearts of millions globally. In the serene moments before his passing, Roy found solace in his faith and inner peace, reflecting on a life well lived. He shared a poignant final moment with his son, Dusty Rogers, with whom he had recently reconciled after a period of estrangement due to personal and religious differences. Roy's last words to Dusty, I never expected to see you in heaven, conveyed both a sense of surprise and joy at their reconciliation. This heartfelt exchange underscored the depth of their relationship and Roy's hope for a continued connection beyond this life, marking a tender conclusion to an extraordinary journey. The news of Roy Rogers' passing struck a chord with countless fans and admirers, leaving a profound impact on those influenced by his life and enduring legacy. At his memorial service, Dale Evans, his beloved partner in life and art, delivered a touching eulogy proclaiming, Heaven rejoices today because another saint has come home. The ceremony was imbued with emotion as Dale and her children sang Happy Trails, offering a poignant tribute to the cowboy who had captured the hearts of so many. The media and celebrities alike expressed their sorrow and admiration for Rogers, a figure synonymous with integrity, kindness and philanthropy. His legacy was celebrated not only for his monumental contributions to entertainment, but also for his generous spirit and moral fortitude. Tributes poured in from notable individuals, including President Bill Clinton and prominent Hollywood executives, all echoing the sentiment that Roy Rogers was a man of exemplary character, whose impact transcended his cinematic achievements. What do you think about the exclusive insights into his life shared by the daughter and granddaughter of Roy Rogers? Join the conversation by dropping a comment below, press one if you felt a connection with this story or heart oil if it didn't resonate with you. Your insights and feedback are invaluable as we explore stories that delve into the essence of human experience. Thank you for watching and we eagerly anticipate your participation in future videos. Goodbye.